right screen එක පේනවනේ කට්ටියට chat එකෙන් reply කරන්න ඒක ඔබට මතක් බලා ගත්තා කි ආ ඉය සෝරි ආ ඉෆ් ෆොගොට් ටු මෙන්ෂන් දැට් සෝ දේ ආර් සම් ටෙමිල් ස්ටුඩන්ට්ස් ඔල්සෝ සෝ ඇයි වුල් බී කන්ඩක්ටින් ද සෙෂන් ඉන් ඉංග්ලිෂ් ඔකේ ආයි so we'll start from the uh, first question so since it is a retaining wall question mostly there yeah, might be a chance that uh, we can get this right uh, in the design paper right so the first question is a gravity retaining wall uh, shown in figure q1 Uh, is required to retain a 5 meter cohesionless soil uh, soil properties uh, uh, soil properties are bulk unit weight is given as 18 and the friction angle is uh, 30 the wall is embedded in 1 meter as shown and the drainage system is provided right the ground water table is below the base of the wall ignore any passive resistance from the soil in front of uh, the wall and use rankin theory to evaluate the lateral earth pressure take the coefficient of friction between the wall and the soil to be 10 uh, 5 right state the purpose of uh, drainage blanket so it is a straightforward theory question so uh, the drainage blanket will allow uh, drainage to occur right so in that case there won't be any active pressure uh, acting on the retaining wall uh, from the soil right there, there will be some water table or water pour waters in the soil so due to that pour water usually there will be an active pressure on either it is a retaining wall or a, a sheet pile according to the situation there will be an active pressure from the water so due to this drainage blanket they are, they are, we are allowing drainage we are allowing the water to flow down or flow, flow most it's flowing down right so uh, here there won't be any active pressure from uh, the water so that is the concept for the first part right uh, in the second part right uh, determine the factor of safety against sliding so they are asking us to find the factor of safety against uh, sliding right uh, so so here right in the sliding thing uh, give me a minute just give me a minute i'll be back so i hope you all are having your question papers with you so i am sharing i'm not sharing that now just give me a minute Someone's mic is on. Please, can you uh, mute your mic? Right. Uh, so I'll just. Uh, draw the figure here right so the figure is somewhat like this a gravity retaining wall so we are having a figure like this 
Okay. So in the question itself, they have mentioned us uh, to uh, neglect the passive resistance. So we are not going to consider about this uh, uh, this height thing, right? We are not going to consider this portion, this one meter portion, right? So we are going to only consider about the passive thing, right? Sorry, the active thing. So the height is uh, given as five meter. So the height of the retaining wall is five meter. Uh, the bulk unit weight is 18 kilonewtons per meter cube, right? Uh, and here the dimension is 0 0.6 meters. And here the dimension is 4.2 meter, right? Uh, right. So the factor of safety against sliding. So we have to see about two forces. One, the first one is the force which creates the sliding, right? Which creates sliding. So we know the force which creates the sliding is the active force, right? Active force is the person which is creating this uh, slide. The resistance force, which prevents from sliding, the resistance is the friction, right? So since this is a gravity retaining wall, so this is a gravity retaining wall, right? The weight of the entire structure, the weight of this structure is the reason for the friction, right? So calculating the weight is a easy part. Here we we need to calculate the area of this trapezoid, and uh, considering unit length, we can uh, find the volume and multiply by the unit weight of the uh, concrete. Right. So first of all, we'll see about the active force. Right. So here. Right. The active force uh, increases due to the depth, right? Active force will increase due to the depth uh, since active force is Ka times the active pressure coefficient times the vertical depth. So since Ka is a constant, right? The vertical depth is a parameter sorry, the vertical uh, stress is a parameter, sigma V is a parameter, which is equal to gamma times H. Uh, when the height varies linearly, the sigma V also varies linearly. So since sigma H, the active pressure, the sigma stress, the active stress is equal to Ka times, Ka times sigma V. So if sigma V varies linearly, then sigma H also varies linearly. So the lateral earth pressure Ka is given by one plus, sorry, one minus sine phi dash over one plus sine phi dash, right? So this is equal to one minus our five, our angle is uh, given as 30 degrees. So sine 30 over here it's one plus sine 30. So this is a half divided by three by two. So this is one by three, right? So we know what is Ka, right? So what will be the uh, force, right? How, how to find the force over there? So the idea is we have to find the stress at the bottom, right? Here we have to find the stress at this bottom point here, right? So that is equal to Ka times, that is one by three times the vertical stress. So the vertical stress is, since the height is five and uh, the bulk unit weight is 18, so it is five times 18, right? So it is five times 18 over there. So the answer would be uh, 30, right? So 30 kilopascals, right? This is 30 kilopascals. But when you see the figure, I'll use a different color. 
right? If you draw the stress distribution, so it is it will be something like a this sort of a triangle, right? So here we have to find the area of this triangle to get the force. So it's simple as that, right? So the area will be half into. I'm sorry. I should do. Thanks, man. Oh yes. So the area would be um, half times five into thirty. So half times five is the height of the retaining wall, and thirty is the uh, effective stress over there. So so this is simply seventy five kilonewtons. Right. So we have calculated what is the force which is responsible for the sliding. Right. So if there is no any drainage blanket. We have to consider the water level, and after considering the water level, we have to calculate the active force from the water also. So in this case, we no need to worry about water, right? So the resistance. So the so the resistance is given by mu times r. So here the r is weight of this structure. So how to find the weight? So mu they have said as the resistance. As given as tan five, so tan five means tan thirty, right? Times the area of this uh, trapezoid is half into sum of parallel sides, so four point two plus zero point six into the height five. So this is the area. So we are considering unit width. So unit width means into one, so the volume. And they have given the density of the material as twenty two. So we can. Find the resistance force. So the resistance force is 152.42 kilonewtons. Right. So what would be the factor of safety? Right. So the factor of safety is the resistance force should be divided by. Right. So I write FOS at the bottom. So the factor of safety FOS. Right is the resistance force one hundred and fifty two point four two by seventy five. So if you calculate this one, you can get the resistance force. Right? Do you have any doubts here? So if you unmute then you can speak. If you have any doubts. चुट ख All right. Okay. Right. So in the case now, what he is asking is right. So he here, if we have some sort of water level, right. So let's say this is our structure. Right. So this is our retaining wall, and uh, we are having a. Water level here, right? So this is our water level, right? So in this case, right, due to the soil present in the right hand side, right? So I'll draw the soil's distribution in green color. So this will be the pressure from the soil, right? We'll be having an active pressure from the soil, right? Other than this active pressure, there will be another active pressure from the water. It will start from here, since the water level is here. It will start from here. It may be greater than or less than. So we can't predict the value now. So since I am just doing a qualitative 
thing. So the, sometimes this blue triangle might be inside the green triangle. So that is dependent on the, uh, the values, right? So here the active pressure contribution is from both the water and the soil, right? And from the soil, right? Once there is a drainage blanket in between, if there is a drainage blanket here, all this water, right? This water will be drained out. So there will be no effect from the water. Right? If drainage blanket is present. If drainage is present. Right? So in this case here, when you are having a water table here, you have to add the effect of water also. Right? As the same calculation, you have to add the effect, the active pressure from the water also. That is the thing. Right? Simple as that. Anything else in this section? Excuse me, Mali. Okay, and Mali, me mangya hui the me ke tieni ani pette me one meter water level le kati no ni. Ek one meter water level ne, ek one meter soil diye ne. Ah, soil diye ne. Oh, soil diye ne. Ek ek gan no ne ne dar kat. Ne ne, ek gan ek me kiel di no ani gan de pa kiel and samane geotechnically practice karan na hai, ek samara designs te gan ne me ara samara me ek. Passive waking resistance ekab dena wani dena kote stability ekab poda increase wena wa. It sometimes kauruari retaining wall ekre isara tiyan na soil ekab dena wa. Kian ekab metane kia metane tiyan na soil ekane. Me wagi me soil ekab kauruari harala aing karana ekab kote structure ekab critical wena wa. E inda design ekab me awa consider karan na. Aha deng. Me gan ang wala timo na ina. Oh me me gan ina ekab kia lamat tiyan wa consider karan depa kia la. Saman yang consider keranda Q, ana, saya perhati no, tu, saya triangle kak, entala, pasiu, ikut KP, ikut ganang kala, hada agni anda no. Ikat resistance force with dia tu, saya act karno, saya resistance force with dia act karno. It loku ganak kene, body ganak kene, saya agi. Ika, ika arki ngadu kerana ni. Oh, okay. Anything else? Thank you. Ali, okay. Then water. Apa itu mukul soil leke itu kotah dengne unit weight tega submerge na itu kotah unut teh ma. Apa adu kalla dekarn ne water ke adu kalla dekarn ne nine point eight one adu kalla dekarn ne mana deh. Oh water table leke tapal. Oh water table leke tapal leh. Effect teka minus one mana? Minus. Nen, deh mangga ne itu kotah soil leke soil leke p me active weka kotah sedega kotah kadal dah dah ni kiala. Oh, macam triangle ke shape ke headi minus one mana? मैं हरी मैं कट पास से हरी और आप क्या ने मैं माँ उड़ा वोट लेवल लेके उड़ा दिखे ओ इतने वेनास एक रफ पाले आए कैलकुलेशन ने वेनास आ देखा आप किधर गान वाले ओ देखा आप किधर गान डोल आये मैं सॉरी नाइन पॉइंट एट वन आडू कल्ला ने मैं ने गान ने ने नहीं नहीं मितने देंगे यार गेमा� अरे यूनिट वेट का राइट में तो ना वो या सैचुरेटेड यूज़ कराने वाले ना हाँ रे हाँ हाँ राइट इधर वो टाइम क्या ना देंग वाटर एक ऐना कोटा वातुरा ऐना कोटा सोइल लेके इन्हें इन्हें इफेक्ट का आडू ऐना वाले आपे प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इफेक्टिव स्ट्रेस तो टाइम तो ना अभी वाटर टेबल लेके प्रेजेंट वेट क Water table लेकर उड़ींग only total parameters हाँ रे हाँ रे हाँ रे नहीं एक एक तो मैं मांग किया नहीं तो कुछ वो यार मांग गान्दो वो ने active active pressure एक उड़ा दिया ना गैमा 18 वर्ट वैन मांग गान्दो इलान टैक्टिव प्रेशर एक गैमा saturated वर्ट गान्दो आय water table water वर्ट वैन मांग गैमा वैन मांग गान्दो वैन मांग गान्दो मैं process एक common में तो ना retaining wall लेकर टाट ऐ मतलब है सीट पर इल्ले के इतना कभी तो पौड़ी चांस है का काम भी ना हुआ वाटर टेबल लेकर देखा तो मैं सीट पर इल्ले का सीट पर इल्ले यानी मैं मैं निकांग स्ट्रेट लाइन ने काटने तो सीट पर इल्ले का कभी करता ना मैं निकांग एक एडिशनली में तो ना किया ना निकांग सीट पर इल्ले का मैं मैं करता ना 
අපිට සමහර වෙලාවට වෝටර් ටේබල් දෙපැත්තම එනවා මේ වගේ සේම් ලෙවල් එකට හ්ම් අපිට රෙජින් කරාත් දෙපැත්තම සේම් ලෙවල් තිබ්බා නම් අපිට වෝටර් ලෙවල් ගැන කිසිම කැල්කියුලේෂන් කරන්න අවශ්‍ය නැහැ ඇයි දෙපැත්තම බැලන්ස් වෙනවනේ ආ හ හ බැලන්ස් වෙන වෝටර් ගේ එෆෙක්ට් එක මේ පැත්තෙන් ඇක්ටිව් වුණොත් වෝටර් මේ පැත්තෙන් ඇක්ටිව් වුණොත් අනිත් පැත්තෙන් වෝටර් පැසිව් වෙනවා පැසිව් වෙනවා හරි එතකොට කොහොමත් ඒක බැලන්ස් වෙනවා එෆෙක්ට් එක බැලන්ස් වෙනවා හ්ම් එතන වෝටර් නැහැ කියලා හිතාගෙන ගන්න හදාගෙන ඔව් එතන ප්‍රශ්නයක් නැහැ එතන වෝටර් අවශ්‍ය නැහැ හ්ම් හරි තැන්කියු ඕකේ shall we move on to the next part then uh, so i'll move on if you have any ek 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 ara r ek ganna kota udin thiyena me ara trikona kalak yani passive patte ara thiyene soil wedge ekey bara inne nedda koy de oya kiyanne koy pattende kiyanne me read retaining wall ekey soil or oh, retaining wall ekey uh, left side ekey thiyene me passive Maybe side ekane oh ek ara udin inawane ඔව් ඒක අර මේ උඩින් සොයිල් වෙජ් එකක් එනවනේ ත්‍රිකෝණ එක හැඩි ඒකේ බරත් එකතු වෙන්නේ නැද්ද ආර් වර්ල්ඩ් ඔව් කොතනද කියන්නේ පොටක් මට ඩ්‍රෝ කරලා ඩ්‍රෝ කරන්න පුළුවන් නෑ ඔය ඔතනම තමයි ඔය ඔතන ඔය ඔය දැන් මේ සොයිල් වෙජ් එක දෙවෙනි දැන් පාට කරේ එතන එතන මේ ඔය වෝල් එකේ ඉඳන් උඩට ඉරක් ගහම තියෙන මේ ත්‍රිකෝණ එකක් එනවනේ එතනේ සොයිල් වල බරත් එකතු වෙන්නේ නැද්ද පහල ආර් එකට මේ සොයිල් ගේ බරද දැන් මම ඒක ඒක හයිලයිට් කරපු සොයිල් ගේ බරද දැන් ඒ වෝල් එකට උඩින් තිත් පොඩගින්න මම අන්ඩර්ස්ටෑන්ඩ් කරපු එක හරිද කියලා බලා ගන්න මම මෙතන කළු පාටෙන් අන්දනවා මේ මේ ත්‍රිකෝණ ගේ බරය ඉන්න එකට ඔව් ඔව් ඒක ඉන්න නැහැ නේ ආහා ඒකත් පැසිව් විදිහට ගන්න ඕනේ නෑ 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 මේක බරට ඇඩ් වෙන්නෙත් නෑ හරිද ඔයා ප්‍රැක්ටිකලි හිතලා බලන්න මේ වගේ ස්ට්‍රක්චර් එකක් තියෙනවා නම් ඔයා මේකට උඩින් මේ කළු පාටට ඇඳලා තියෙන ත්‍රිකෝණයක් ප්ලේස් කරා නම් ඒ ත්‍රිකෝණ එතනේ හිටිනවද ඒ විදිහට ඒක හිටින්නේ නෑ ඔව් ඔව් ඒක බර බරක් විදිහට ස්ට්‍රක්චර් එකට එකතු වෙන්නේ නෑ ඇයි ඒක සෙපරේට් පෝෂන් එකක් නේ එකක් සොයිල් අනිත් එක කොන්ක්‍රීට් ස්ට්‍රක්චර් රයිට් මෙයා ඕනේ නම් සමහර වෙලාවට මෙයාට පැසිව් විදියට ඇක්ට් වෙන්න පුළුවන් බට් අපිට ගානෙන් කියලා තියෙනවා පැසිව් ගන්න එපා කියලා ඇන්ඩ් ටිපිකලි ප්‍රැක්ටිස් කරනකොටත් පැසිව් ගන්න නැහැ මේ වගේ චූටි පැසිව් රෙසිස්ටන්ස් එකක් අපි ගන්න නැහැ හයි හයි ඔකේ හයි ඔකේ හයි so i'll move on to the next portion right so in the next thing uh, they are asking the factor of safety against overturn right so right uh, where can this structure overturn so if you i'll draw this again right mm. right if we see this structure there are a few points we, we can consider a b c and d right where can this uh, structure topple or overturn so if you see right point d right ah uh, yeah point d right so the point d is the point where we have to consider about overturning right so we know uh, from the right side right right in the right side we have an active force in a triangular format right you may say that right in this triangular format right this is our active force right at the bottom we saw that our value was 30 kilo pascal right so the entire force from this stress distribution will act around 2/3 from the top right somewhere here 
right we know the active force also we calculated the active force the total active force was uh, 75 kilo newton right so the total height is 5 meter so here this will be 10 by 3 meters to this point and the bottom portion will be 5 by 3 meters right so the next thing is the weight there were two forces one was the active pressure another thing was the weight so to calculate the weight we have to divide this structure right into two portions right one is for the triangle triangular portion and another is for the rectangular portion for the triangular portion right uh, if i remember correctly the bottom portion was 4.2 meters so the so this height would be 0 0.6 meter and here it's uh, 0 0.6 so the remaining portion is 3.6 meters so from point d the weight of this triangle will be at a distance of two third right so if it is two third it will be 2.4 meter so the weight would be somewhere here someone's mic is on can you please mute yourself uh, so this distance would be 2.4 meter right uh, who is that mr kasu can you mute yourself right so for the triangle obviously we know sorry it's for the triangle we know the lever arm right so the distance between the point where we are going to take the uh, moment so here so i'm going to take the moment from this point right so so the distance between the moment the point we are we are taking the moment and the uh, line of action of forces so that is this one this is the line of action of this weight so that distance is known as the lever arm so for the triangle that is 2.4 right and for this 75 kilo newton active pressure what is the lever arm so lever arm is 5 by 3 meters right and there's another portion which is the weight of this rectangle right so what is the weight of this rectangle that will be 0.6 times 5 into the density and the lever arm for this uh, rectangular weight is i'll just draw a line here right what would be this distance so here already from point d to here this is 3.6 and this small portion will be 0 0.3 so 3.6 plus 0 0.3 this is 3.9 meters so what is the overturning moment right so what is the overturning moment overturning moment is equal to 75 times 5 by 3 so it is 125 kilo newton per meter so this this person is the reason for the toppling of this retaining wall right so who is uh, resisting it so the resisting moment resisting moment right resisting moment so the weight is the resisting moment so we have to calculate the weight separately here so in the previous part we calculated at once so here i'll uh, just uh, quickly write the equation so for the triangle it's half into uh, so the base is 3.6 into height 5 into density it's 22 so we are considering only unit weight so into it's only one and the lever arm ratio is 2.4 so plus for the rectangular part it's 0. Point, uh, 6 times 5 into 22 into the lever arm is 3.9 so the total would be uh, so i have pre-calculated uh, it's 732.6 kilo newton meter so then what would be the factor of safety okay. so the factor of safety i'll write at the top the factor of safety is resisting moment 732.6 divided by 
the overturning moment right so it is somewhat close to 5.8 okay any doubts here i hope this is a easy part so there won't be any issue here right so I, then i'll move on to the next part so determine the maximum and minimum bearing stresses exerted by the retaining wall so here comes the tricky part right right so if we take if you see the base right right our base length is the base length is 4.2 meter right so if the load should be without any eccentricity it should act at the exact middle right so the center the distance would be right uh 2.1 meters but we don't know whether the load is acting ex exactly at the center so we have to calculate where the load is acting exactly right the resultant load right so we know uh the weight of the entire structure right weight of the structure It's two hundred and sixty-four kilonewton, right? The weight of triangle, so the triangular portion, right? The weight of the triangular portion uh, that is, uh, um, you can do this in a few ways, right? Either you can uh, uh, calculate this in uh, using the center of gravity knowledge. or we can calculate it using our overturning and resisting moments right we know our overturning moment was so that is a bit easier one so the overturning moment was uh if i am right it was 125 kN and the resisting moment was the resisting moment is somewhat around 732.6 kN right so now this these moments were calculated right this especially these resisting moments were calculated uh, with the help of uh, individual figures that is with the triangle and the rectangle right so now i am going to find for the entire structure right we don't know where the weight is acting right we don't know the exact point so from d i am taking the distance as x bar right so 264 times x bar should be equal to 732.6 minus 125 right so that is the concept there right so i hope you can get this one Uh, anyone have a issue in uh, the manner writing this um and you put that that you can you can go on okay hello right uh, i'll just draw the figure without the figure we can't do this one so this was divided here right in the first case here there was one weight here there was another one right here there was another force right and the resultant right so this is our result so this is the 264 one right this one was the 
right? And these were the individual weights, right? So we are going to take the moment from here, right? So if you consider this only the individual weight, right? How will you uh, take the moment for equilibrium? Only this 264 and only this 75, right? So 264, right, times uh, X bar will be the resisting moment. Minus 75 times its lever arm ratio is 75 into five by three, right? This, so this algebraic difference, right? So we, we know this is the resisting moment and we know this is the overturning moment. So this difference, right, should be equal to the difference when considering these two things, right? So when you consider these two things, we get the resisting moment, sorry, the overturning moment as, uh, the overturning moment would be same, right? The resisting moment would be 700 and sorry, the resisting moment is uh, the totally 732 point. Sorry, it's I just proved it yesterday and I forgot it. Wait, 732.6, right? The resisting moment. So if it comes this side, it should be plus. Why is that it's plus? Give me a minute, there's some confusion uh, in my derivation. So here, so we take the moment. Just give me a minute. It's 132.6 divided by 264. There is some confusion in my derivation. I have did some wrong derivation, if I'm right. Uh, active from Soyland. The active from Soyland may take a plus. We are this year at a x bar plus 75 into 5.3. That's why. That is for one. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. 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 Opposite side ne rotate twin. Oh ne the opposite side ne yani. Oh opposite side thamai rotate twin ne mang minus da pe ka hari hari da. Prashna thi yani me ka anithi diya ta karan da pulu mang. Ima karan di tapit x bar ekho hoya gan da pulu mang. Mang make derive kara derive kara pe kung koy do dal.
ஒன் right and we know this distance so this is 3.9 right and we have taken moments from point d right and we wrote this as the resisting moment so the resisting moment is the moment of this weight and the moment of this weight the total so that was 732.6 right so the resultant moment from these two this red color ones should be equal to this green one so since this green one is the total weight so if we calculate the moment resisting moment from the total weight right so that is 264 times x bar so these should both should be equal so in that case 732.6 should be equal to 264 x bar so from here we can find x bar so that is to somewhat close to 2.78 right 2.78 meters right so if the load is exactly at the center at it, this location there won't be any eccentricity right so here the eccentricity is 2.78 minus 2.1 so that is 0.68 meters right once we know the eccentricity we know the bearing stress can be written from the formula um the weight right so that is rv the vertical reaction over b times 1 plus or minus 6e over b so this is the equation so here we have to substitute rv in case of rv that is 264 by b is the width of the base that is 4.2 or 1 plus or minus 6 times e is 0.68 over again b is 4.2 so if we use all that we, when we take the positive we get the maximum and we when we take the negative we take the minimum right so here uh, be careful with that one you can simply use the o level sorry a level ideas okay you pressure ekema kot tokata effect ekak nae neda nae me active pressure ekata mokut wenne mokut prashna ekak nae etana api just eka me ekata effect ekak nae da we oh Yes, 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 yes. That's the point I missed there. You have okay, to okay. You are right. Me. You are right. You are right. You are right. That's the point I I I forgot there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, so what we missed here in this thing is right here. Wait, I'll just erase it and I'll just explain it. Sorry, sorry. That is the thing I forgot there. right so we know right right we know the weight of the structure is 264 right so let's just keep that in mind right so there will be an active moment right due to that uh, 75 kilo newton thing there will be an active moment 125 kilo newton and uh, there will be a resisting moment right 
right 732.6 kilonewton meter right so what will be the resultant moment acting on the structure resultant moment so the resultant moment is 732.6 minus 125 right this would be the resultant moment acting on the structure so if we just calculate this one this is 0.6 and here it is 706 right all right yeah kilonewton per meter right this is the resultant moment which is acting on the structure due to this moment there will be a stress developing at the base right there will be a stress at the base so we have to find the point of application of this stress right so this stress is created uh, at the base right so from point d we have to find where is this uh, moment acting right that means there is a weight from this structure due to that structure there will be a stress developing at the bottom right this, that stress would be somewhat reduced by this 75 kilonewton due to this uh, 75 kilonewton so we have deducted that effect here and now we have to find where is that uh, total resultant is acting so the point of application x bar would be equal to 607.6 divided by 264 right so, so just uh, grab that concept right so they are due to this weight of this structure there will be a stress developing at the bottom this 75 kilonewton active force will reduce that amount by some value right so we have deducted the effect of that one here we have deducted that effect here so now this is the resultant moment acting at the bottom so that weight is caused by so that stress is caused by this weight of the structure so here the value would be right 2.3 so now again we have to find the eccentricity so the eccentricity is 2.3 minus 2.1 so that is 0 0.2 and again the similar calculation that is uh, the stress sigma is equal to uh, r by b to 1 plus or minus 6 e by b so if you have to just substitute the value and take the plus for maximum and the minus for minimum. So that is the concept here. So whoever was that, uh, thank you. Any issues? Only me, me. Then I simply see the value. The calculation to me, the calculation make a cut. Do you know when value will be? The calculation make a kind value will be made. The calculation make a kind name. Then me eccentricity kind name. Monada structure reckoning. Hari axis reckoning. Madi madi ing tama. Hari yeta structure reckoning. Me load reckoning. Wetu na nang. Bending moment reckoning. Khede inne ani. Axis reckoning. Uding ma load reckoning. Hari yeta wetu na nang. Bending moment reckoning. Khede inne. Then මේ ස්ට්‍රක්චර් සේම නැහැ නේ හැම වෙලේම ස්ට්‍රක්චර් සේම හැදෙන්නේ නැහැ කොහේ හරි එහාට මෙහාට යනවා මේ බේස් එකෙන් හරි මැද කියන්නේ d ඉඳලා d කියන්න පොයින්ට් ඉඳලා 2.1 දුරකින් නේ හා හා හරි අපි ගණන් කරද්දි අපේ ලෝඩ් එක වැටෙනවා d ඉඳලා 2.3 මීටර් දුරකින් එහෙනම් අපේ එසෙන්ට්‍රිසිටි එක කීයද 0.2 මීටර්ස් රයිට් රයිට් ථැන්ක් යු ඔකේ right so we'll move on to the second question so since that is also a question uh, related to footing and uh, it's a bit different question so we'll do that one also i hope you all are having the paper so i am not going to share that screen so i'll just continue uh, by reading so design the footing shown in uh, the figure to support the following two columns with the uniform contact pressure the dead load and live load acting on each column are given right uh, so for right 
neglect effect due to weight of the foundation and back leaf uh, back feet mm, what are the circumstances uh, necessary for combined footing illustrate with neat sketches so the theory part obviously can be read in the book and uh, we know that one so that is not related to the so the design so i am not i am skipping that one here right uh, right the second question is a bit necessary here right the state that requirement which needs to be satisfied to achieve a uniform pressure distribution underneath the base of the combined footing so the weight the resultant weight should be acting on the center of gravity right uh, someone said that they don't have the paper but i'll try to put the paper here give me a second you may second some some doesn't have the paper so i'll just share the paper for them so you can download the paper from the elan it's available in the elan also i'll just share it now Yeah, I have sent the file, so you can take that, right? So if you if you take any footing, right, a simple footing, yeah, a square footing or a rectangular footing, right? If the load is exactly at the center of the footing, that is the center of gravity, at here. at this point g the stress distribution will be uniform so that is a simple concept there right uh, right uh, if the net allowable bearing pressure is 200 oh, sorry find the distance x so that the contact pressure is uniform right i'll just draw the structure here and we'll uh, move on to the question right so our structure is uh, something like this right so here we have one load our total load so you know how to calculate the total load so right so what would be the total load here so 1.4 times the dead load and plus 1.6 times the live load right similarly for p1 and p2 right so i am calculating the ultimate load here as the design load says p1 and p2 right so here the distances okay. foundation excuse me foundation will the 1.1 one back take a 1.4 will ready karanne ne 1 kiyala ne ganne fact take a ready karanne 1 into the dead load plus 1 into the live load ne design ekata serviceability limit condition result ne foundation will the foundation ne ke serviceability limit ekata ne ekata फिर එතකොට ෆැක්ටර් එක අඩු ඒ කියන්නේ දැන් ඔය 1.6 1.4 කියලා දැම්මම ෆැක්ටර් අවත් අමෞන්ට් එක අඩු වෙන එක නෙමෙයි ඒ කියන්නේ මැක්සිමම් අමෞන්ට් එකකට අපි ඩිසයින් කරන්නේ නේද එතකොට මට තේරෙන හැටියට එහෙම ඒ කියන්නේ එතකොට තව අඩු වෙනවනේ අපේ හොය ඩිසයින් ලෝඩ් එක ඕකේ ඔව් ඒක හරි ඒක හරි හැබැයි එතන නම් මම හොයපු විදියට ගන්න ඕනේද ගන්න අරගෙන තමයි කරලා තියෙන්නේ හරිද 
අපේ papers වල තේම තමයි තිබ්බේ අටහම් බිච්ච විදියට එහෙම කියන්නේ net එකෙන් නෙවෙයි මම කියන්නේ හරිද අපේ open එකේ විදියට මම කියන්නේ maybe ඒකට හැමතිස්සම factor ඔව් sorry factor of safety දාලා ගන්නේ නේද ඔව් factor කරලා තමයි හදලා තියෙන්නේ හරිද හා ඒක මම හිතන්නේ ස්පෙෂලි මෙන්ෂන් කරලා තිබ්බොත් එහෙම අපි ගන්නව ඇත්තටම මොකද අර සර්ගේ එක ටියුටෝරියල් එක අර වගේ ගානක මෙන්ෂන් කරලා තිබ්බේ සර්විසිබිලිටි වලට ගන්න කියලා ඔව් සර්විසිබිලිටි එකට ගන්නා කියලා තිබ්බා නම් අපි ෆැක්ටර් කරන්න ඕනේ නැහැ කෙලින්ම ඩෙඩ් ලෝඩ් වෙයි ලයිව් ලෝඩ් වෙයි එකතු කරගෙන කරගෙන යන්න පුළුවන් ආ රයිට් ඔකේ රයිට් සෝ මෙතන අපිට ටෝටල් ලෝඩ් එක රයිට් මෙතන මේ ඩිස්ටන්ස් එක දීලා තියෙනවා රයිට් මේ ඩිස්ටන්ස් එක තමයි අපිට රූපෙන් දීලා තියෙනවා x කියලා රයිට් සෝ හොයන්න කියන්නේ මේ x සෝරි දේ ආස්ක් සෝරි සෝ දේ ආ ආස්කින් අස් ටු ෆයින්ඩ් x සෝ සෝ ඇම් ගෝයින් ටු ටේක් මොමෙන්ට් ෆ්‍රොම් හියර් ඇට් දිස් එන් පොයින්ට් ඇ ඉල් මාක් දිස් ඇස් a රයිට් ඇන්ඩ් ද ටෝටල් වෙයිට් වුඩ් බි ද ටෝටල් වුඩ් බි p1 p2 රයිට් සෝ මොමෙන්ට් ෆ්‍රොම් a so the individual moment from p1 and p2 sum of these two moments should be equal to the resultant force moment also right so that is that means from a if you are taking moment so p1 times uh, the column size is uh, 50 by 50 so here it would be 0. Uh, so half meter half meter means it is 0.25 the lever arm right so plus p2 times 5.25 right that should be equal to the resultant moment from this entire uh, p1 plus p2 so that would be so if this there there should be any uniform distribution we know this should be at the center so if it is center the total length is so this, this small portion is 0.25 so the total length is 5.25 5.25 plus x by 2 would be the lever to be at center so into the force p1 plus p2 so by solving this we can find what is x right do you have any issues here in finding x මල්ලි චුට්ටක් ආපව මේ මොකද රයිට් සයිඩ් එකේ ගත්ත විදිය පොඩ්ඩක් කියන්නේ රයිට් ඉන්ඩිවිජුවලි ෆෝසස් දෙකක් තියෙනවා නේ ඔව් මේක p1 නොයි p2 මේ දෙක හින්දා ස්ට්‍රක්චර් එකට එන ගූර්ණය සමාන වෙන්න ඕනේ නේ රිසල්ටන්ට් එකෙන් හින්දා එන ගූර්ණයටයි ඔව් තේරෙනවද ඔව් එතකොට p1 ගේ ගූර්ණය එනවා p1 වාරයක් දශම දෙකයි පහයි ඔව් a එක ගාව ඉඳලා ගන්නේ මෙතන ඉඳලා අරන් තියෙන්නේ රයිට් ඒ වගේම p2 ගේ ගූර්ණය මේ දෙක එකතු කරා මේ දෙක ඉන්ඩිවිජුවල් ෆෝසස් ගේ ගූර්ණය ඔව් ඔව් ඒක සමාන වෙන්න ඕනේ රිසල්ටන්ට් ගේ ගූර්ණයට හරිද එතකොට රිසල්ටන්ට් ෆෝස් කියන්නේ p1 p2 රයිට් ඇන්ඩ් අපිට කන්ඩිෂන් එකක් දීලා තියෙනවා කන්ටැක්ට් ප්‍රෙෂර් එක යුනිෆෝම් වෙන්න ඕනේ contact pressure එක uniform වෙන්න ඕනේ කියන්නේ මේ entire length එකෙන් හරි මැද්දෙන් තියන්න ඕනේ නේ අහ්හ් එතකොට entire length එක එනවා අපිට 5.5.2.5 x එකෙන් හරි මැද කියන්නේ එකෙන් භාගයක් නේ right right thank you එතකොට x එක හොයන්න පුළුවන් x විතරයි නේ මෙතන නොදන්න පද right so once we find the x the next part is uh, much easier if the net allowable bearing pressure is 200 so calculate the b so we have to calculate the bearing pressure at our, uh, using our terms so our the total load will would be p1 plus p2 so we have to divide this by the area so we don't know the breadth so it's b times the length that is 5.25 plus x so this should be greater than or equal sorry less than or equal to 200 so from this we can find b so b would be something like this b greater than or equal to some value so we can find the b minimum
ओके आई यू क्लियर विद दिस ओके ओके सो द नेक्स्ट पार्ट द सी एफ बेंडिंग मोमेंट डायग्राम राइट draw diagrams to indicate the variation of the shear force and the bending moment diagram along the footing right mm. excuse me yes yes uh i mean contact uh, uniform pressure uh, contact pressure ekak uniform ekak chutta ekak thera unnane x kiyana ekak anipatta taran thiyena widiya x kiyanne ekak anipatta taran thiyena widiya kiyanne e kiyanne den 5.2 kiyana ekak meda kiyana ekak taran thiyenne फोर्स oh, रीप्लेस कर P2 ten decker king when a when a act to end act current nika mang replace current dyan o only single force single force again mang replace current dyan o mag e force ka P1 plus P2 hari da ito na may den na may den na individually den na effect dyan o may at den o then structure again tiyan na total load dyan ka maker hari da apita tao very poor condition nika kaya no a may P1 plus P2 may total load dyan ka hinda structure again यूनिफॉर्म डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ने का केंद्र होने के लिए आपे फुटिंग के अभी तो ना यूनिफॉर्म डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ने का केंद्र होने नंग ए पॉइंट ऑफ एप्लीकेशन ने का में लोड डे का एक्टुअल ना पॉइंट टेका सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी वेंड होने हर इधर आपे टोटल लेंथ टेका 5.25 प्लस एक्स सेंटर ऑफ ग्रेविटी यानी म right for the final part right draw diagrams right the bending moment diagram right so if you if we take i'll just draw a simple line for the footing our combined footing so this is our combined footing right so at the bottom right we'll be having a uniform distribution right at the bottom we'll be having uniform distribution at top we'll be having Two point loads, right? So this distance would be zero point two five. Here it's five. Here it is uh, the x value which you would have calculated. Here this is our P one. This is P two, and we would have calculated a W or UDL, right? So you have to calculate the UDL. So you can find the UDL, right? So how to find the UDL? You know P one plus P two, right? You know what is x, right? If you you uh, just multiply, uh, sorry, divide p1 plus p2 by your breadth, right? So we are we are drawing the bending moment diagram along this axis, right? So there is another axis which is into the paper, right? Which is into the paper through that direction. The parameter is b, right? So I am only dividing by that parameter. right so you will get the udl w so after finding that udl w this is straight forward strength of material question so we have to consider this portion one the second portion is here and the third portion so we have to calculate the shear force diagram and the bending moment so shear force values and the bending moment and just draw it So simple UDL, which is in upside down. I think I no need to do do this part, right? Any issues here?
right right so i'll move on to the next one so you can uh, find out the diagram so it's uh, not a big deal right so i am not going to do the third question the third question is uh, related to triaxial test right so the triaxial test uh, i think that won't be asked under design part so i am not going to do that one uh so the fourth one is about pumping test right the aquifer one so should i do that aquifer part because uh, generally it's a easy question aquifer and uh, the uh, some are asking to draw the diagram right so i'll just draw the rough uh, diagram right for shear force Right. So shear force, uh, I got something like this. Right. Shear force, I got some shape like this. And for bending moment, I did some for my values, right? Put something. These are parabolas, so it's a bit difficult to draw, right? So three different parabolas, some odd shape like this, right? So I don't know. Yeah, I got these kind of ellipses, right? So they are asking me to do the aquifer equation, so I'll move on to that. A uh, well pumping test was carried out to determine the permeability of a confined aquifer, right? So they have said, so the aquifer is confined. So above the aquifer, there will be an impermeable layer and below the aquifer also, there will be, there will be an uh, impermeable layer. So let's see what is the thing. Uh, the aquifer was overlain by a clay layer, overlain. So overlain means, so above the, uh, Aquifer, there is a clay layer uh, of thickness, so we don't we no need to bother about the thickness of that, so that doesn't matter for us. So here the depth of the aquifer is 20 meter, and the initials of below would be some maybe some rock or some other impermeable uh, layers, right? Uh, and the initial piezometric level in the aquifer was two meter below the ground level, right? So the initial condition is given. So here they have said, uh, so this is four meter. So this would be our ground level. So the initial condition was uh, two meter water level. So that is our free ticket is around uh, two meter at this middle portion. Okay. So this is our water level, right? Uh, steady flow rate is given, steady flow rate Q, uh, oh, so the capital Q is given as 1.3, sorry, 1.637 liters per second. Uh, well radius is 0 0.1, drawdown just outside the well, right? So the drawdown just outside the well is two meter and drawdown in a piece of meter at a hundred meter distance. Uh, 
right? So there is, let's say our aquifer is here. Mm. Um. <laughs> Who is that man, Yoni? <laughs> Just move to your mic, please. Uh, and there is an aquifer at a distance of 100 meter. Right? Sorry, there is an observation well, not an aquifer. Observation well. Right? Uh, the drawdown. Drawdown is 0.2. So from the phreatic uh, line, the draw, drawdown is 0.2 meters. So the level is something like this. So the drawdown just outside means the ISO observation well, which is very close to this um, aquifer. So there, the drawdown is two meters. So much like this, here the drawdown is two meter, right? So they are asking us to derive the principle, derive, the, derive from the first principle, the equation used to determine permeability, right? So from the Darcy's law, we can write, so velocity V is equal to minus K times hydraulic gradient, right? In the radial direction, right? From equation of continuity, right? The drawdown Q plus the extraction from the radial direction that is two pi r into l so that is the surface area of the uh, of our aquifer times the velocity so velocity is minus k times delta h by delta r right so this should be equal to zero right so our q is equal to 2 pi r l times k into dh by dr, right? So now further for the integration part, I am just changing this uh, like this. So q times 1 over r into dr equal to 2 pi l into k into dh. So I, for integration, both sides r1 r2 here h1 h2 so q into ln so r2 by r1 so ln r so if you integrate this so you will get ln r so when you substitute the uh, limits that is l2 ln r2 minus ln r1 so in logarithmic values if they are subtracting you can divide so r2 by r1 equal to 2 pi uh, l k into here that is h2 minus h1. So this is our h2 and this is our h1, the water levels, right? So uh, our drawback values are s1 and s2, right? So what would be the difference, right? The difference would H2 minus H1 is equal to S2 minus, sorry, S1 minus S2, right? I'll mark in a different ink so you can find out that, right? So that is very simple, right? So H2 minus H1 is this distance. Similarly, S1 minus S2 is also the same distance. So both are equal. So you can change this to drawback and go to the final equation, right? So in this question, the, the, the tricky part is which it mentioned has just outside. So for uh, within logarithm, we can't uh, substitute zero and we can't find a value, right? So if it is just outside, I am just considering that they both are touching. So always this distance 100 meters and the distance radial distance are measured from center to center, right? So if the radius is 0.1, the distance would be 0.2, 
of it, right? So one distance is 0.2 and the other distance is 100 meters. Or if you want to find it accurately, you can uh, add the radius also, but there won't be any big change. So one value for radius is, right? Uh, for the second one is 100.1. For R1, it's 0 0.2. So you know what is S1 and S2, you know Q, you know L, and except K, we know every other terms. So just substitute here and we have to calculate the value for K. Right, so they have asked us to find the permeability. After that, they have said, what would be the drawdown if the observation well was at 50 meter? Now the distance is given and they are asking the drawdown. So every other parameters are known except one drawdown. So you have to just again use the equation and repeat the calculation, that's it. Any issues here? The person who wanted me to do the aquifer part. Do you have any? problems further this is an easy part so i think many of you would know that one right so the next is flow net right so what about the flow net So should I do the flow net or not? Yeah, I need to explain flow net, right? Uh, so I hope you can see the figure here, right? You, I'll just share that one. Right, so this is the figure, right? So explain the purpose of cutoff wall uh, provider, right? That's the theory part, since the, there's a cutoff wall, the length of the flow line will increase and it is uh, it in, so there will be much more potential uh, drops and less effect on the base of the dam due to the seepage, right? So those are theory parts. Uh, right. Compute the seepage under the dam in meter cubes per second per meter length of the dam. So the equation for that is equation Q equals H times so Q equal, right? So Q equal K times H into NF by ND, right? So this is the equation. So K is your permeability. H is the height of water uh, here, right? Um, and uh, N is number of flow lines. So flow line is here there is one flow line, here there is another flow line, another flow line would be along this one. So there is three flow lines, right? And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 drops, right? And 10 drops. So just substitute and uh, calculate that part, right? Uh, evaluate the pressure heads at point A and B, right? At point A and B, we need to evaluate the pressure heads, right? So before evaluating the pressure heads, we need to find the total head at point A and point B, right? So what is the total at here, at this location? First of all, we have to find that one. So, the, so if you take this as the datum, here, this is the datum. So what is the total head here? So that is would be the pressure head would be 6.3 and uh, the elevation head would be 17.2. So the total head would be 23.5 here, 23.5. So what is the total head here? The total head would be 17.2, only the elevation. 
so we can find we can find the total drop the total drop is 6.3 so that can be divided into 10 portions so for for each portion there is a drop of 0 0.63 so after one two three drops we can find the total head at a so that is 23.5 minus 3 times 6.3 by 10 so we can find the total head here so if you subtract the elevation head 3 so we can find the pressure head at a similar calculation is for b but here the drop we have to calculate uh, subtract six times right since there are we have passing six drops right uh, so the next part is the tricky part determine the approximate uplift force on the base of the dam in kilonewton per meter length of the dam right so here you have to calculate the pressure heads at these points that is at this one at these points this one here and here right we have to calculate the pressure heads so we know the elevation of this point you can find the elevation of this point so what is the elevation there right so the elevation is 17.2 minus 1.6 and we have to find a total head at that point also right so if you from the total head and the elevation head you can calculate the pressure head here similarly calculate the pressure head at each points right so you know the total heads right you can calculate using a similar equation like this one for each point so here there will be you have to subtract five times the drop here you have to subtract six times the drop here seven times the drop and here eight times the drop right then after subtracting the elevation you will get the pressure head at each point after finding that pressure head you have to use uh, like simpson rules or trapezoidal rule mostly simpson rule is much more accurate right so i think you know the simpson rule right so the force is h by 3 right times y naught plus y n plus four times the odd numbers y1 plus y3 plus y5 something like that plus two times the e1 number y2 plus y4 right so the h is you know the dam is uh, 50 meters so we are dividing it into uh, one, two, three, four equal parts, right? If you are dividing it into four equal parts, then the distance is 50 by four. If you are dividing it equally into six parts, so it's 50 by six. So wherever you are dividing, divide it into equal parts and sub substitute the respective pressure heads and calculate the value. Okay. Excuse me, Mali. Okay, and maybe me B point K where the me uh metana the streamlines were the me eight bala permanent. Eru name another Metana may be then A point K where the or oh, uh, stream lines. Oh, oh, एक प्रश्न आया मैंने मैं मैं क्या अंतिम टाइम मैं 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 इक्वेशन निकले मैं 
Then trapezoidal mm. rule, Simpson rule, killer rules, the one. Approximation mm. rules, a king in a max mm. part. I don't think you okay. Right. Uh, some uh, some some want to explain that last part again. I'll just uh, do it here. Right. So if you take the base of the dam, right? And just consider this as the base of the dam, right? So you have to select some different points. Right, wherever you can calculate the pressure head exactly, you have to select those points. So I'll just select a few points. Right, I have selected few points. Right, uh, then we know along these points the pressure total head would be decreasing. So we know to find we we know how to find the total head for each and every point. So if the drop, let's say the total drop in the total head is, uh, I just assume as delta H, right? And the total number of uh, lines, potential lines as ND. So this is the drop per line. So it's a drop per potential line, right? So if you want to calculate the total head here, you have to just count uh, the location of this point. So in in this case, in our questions case, so if you are considering this point, right? Give me a second. Right, if you are considering this point, right, this point, you have to calculate the total head at that point. Right. If you are considering this point, you have to calculate the total head at this point. So similarly, you have to calculate the total heads first. So without calculating the total head, we can't find the pressure heads. Right. So after finding the total head, right, if, if once the total head is done, right, you have to just subtract the elevation head. So you will get the pressure head. So you need only the pressure head there. Right. Right. After finding the pressure head, right, you have to just apply the Simpson rule, right? Because Simpson rule is a bit more accurate than uh, trapezoidal rule. That is the reason we are using Simpson rule, right? So let's say. The pressure heads at each location as P1, P2. So usually start numbering from zero. So P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5, right? Uh, so we have divided into one, two, three, four, five portions, right? So from the Simpson rule, we can write the force is equal to 50 by five by three, right? So the Simpson, I'll write the Simpson rule again, right? So then it is easier, right? So the Simpson rule is H by three. Here the value Y naught plus Y N plus four times the odd values plus two times the even values. So this is the theory, right? So H is the equal divided uh, portion, right? Uh, So that is F equal to the force is equal to 50 by uh, five in our case by three. So our Y naught is the first value, the initial value is zero. And the final value is P5 plus four times the odd values are P1 and P3. So P1 plus P3 plus two times the even values P2 and P4. Right. So after substituting the values, you can directly find the uh, uplift force. Uh, yeah, you can use the trapezoidal rule also, but uh, the answer is less accurate than Simpson rule. So better if you use that Simpson one.
trapezoidal roll also not that different, but its accuracy is a bit low. Okay, shall we move to the next question? So the next question is a theory question in the final paper. Uh, it's about the consolidation part. And the last question is uh, individual failure, block failure theory. And uh, there's a question, but this question is from uh, Taylor method. If I'm right, this is exactly available in our textbook, right? So should I do that one since it is in the textbook? So I think no. or any response or I'll move on to the next paper, right? Ah, there's a seat pile question. Right, in the sheet pile, uh, in the 2016-17 paper, everyone do you have 16-17 paper? Everyone, anyone who don't have the 16, 17 paper? Yes, someone has raised the hand. Don't you have the paper? This paper. Some people are raising their hands. So don't you have the paper? Are there any issues? Please uh, drop a text or just speak up. So we'll move on to this. Uh, right. An elevation of an anchored flexible sheet pile wall with smooth uh, back uh, retaining the bank of a canal is shown in figure Q1. Uh, there is a uniformly distributed surcharge of 20 kilonewton per meter acting on the sand behind the wall. Uh, the river water level and the ground water level are three meter above the uh, river bed level. The cohesionless sand into the wall, sorry, into which the wall is driven has a bulk unit weight of 18 above the water table, a submerged unit weight of 11 below the water table, and an angle of uh, shearing resistance as uh, 28 degrees, right? So evaluate the earth pressure distribution on either side of the wall, right? They are asking us to evaluate the uh, 
earth pressure distribution right so most of uh, you all know how to evaluate this but uh, before evaluating i want to uh, explain some other thing here uh, we will look at right so so this is our sheet pile right a sheet pile is given right a sheet pile is given to us something like this in this manner so due to the soil present in one side it might topple or it might slide right let's assume there is some mechanism of a collapse happening right so due to that collapse right the structure might rotate like this and it might transform into this shape right the deflected shape so the red ink is the right deflected shape right this is the deflected shape this is our original sheet pile right so here uh about this point right yeah the at this portion the soil is at active state right so what about this portion here so this entire portion is at active state what about this portion here passive so, sorry passive state uh not entirely right so here right. if you would have referred the textbook uh, there would be a resultant diagram so i i wanted to explain yeah, yeah. how that resultant diagrams comes up right so mm-hmm. let's assume we have uh, soil up to this level right we have soil here below this we have soil right so in the so active pressures are the thing which contribute for the deflection right so they contribute for the deflection so below this pivot point right below this pivot point right this this soil this length of soil is pushing the uh sheet pile to the left uh, to the right 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 so this is also in active state right so if we, we are, i am not i am only going to draw the active state distribution right only the active state distribution here so from so this is our sheet pile right so i'll draw the distribution in other ink right so this is our pivot point right so here the distribution will be something like this up to here right so if there is no any surcharge above it will start from zero if there is no any surcharge it it will start from zero and let's assume uh, this height to be um, some h right so here the value would be k times gamma times h right so in the other side also there will be an active pressure only the active pressure i am now only considering about the active pressure right so in the other side also there will be an active pressure developing and beyond this line it will be in this manner so i'll take this depth as d and here the value would be k a times um a times gamma times d right this is this is only for active not the final one it's only for active right similarly if we take the passive thing okay right? now we are only considering the passive right so what is a passive force work passive force is the one which is holding the structure steady right so wherever there is an active force right which is cancelled out like some portion like here 
here, this portion, there will be a passive force acting, right? So how that passive force will develop here? Right? If we take the diagram here, there will be a passive force. There will be passive force in this location up to here, right? Excuse me, Mali. Okay, Kanda. Me, me, then I, uh, me pull. Me D value we come. I am going to me K A value. Oh, me. Why can I left hand side again? Oh, well, it's oh, oh, make a result and anyway. make a final diagram. Make an away. Making a people when I'm active, wake a balanoa when I'm a passive wake a balanoa. It was say a deco coma the pee a cut holding a cut the end of the balloon is superposition. Make a cut holding Elan Gaka Tiala final diagram. Make up in the Indian name of the man. Then make any body may body cotas of them may Malipasi and they. A passive go and put it to second. Um, put it part again. The put again, I'm a carana at the gill again. May her in the Nene, uh, make a little line neck and the unnamed. Oh, 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 it in itana my passive with my passive go and itana and then a quarter, sir. May uh, with an a key, a well, the key, d daughter, d dealing ticket. Make a Oh, oh. Make a making advent on a kill again. Or may K A Hoya D. Then pass in the Pramani making advent on end. Honey come on the tail in Mama Honeyman Lee active wicker. Uh, left hand side ke thi na active ka oya marker ni k a k gamma d gamma d ki ala ek d ki ala lente ka sampurni ma ganna ma the mukda atna me passive podi ke ala tiye na nisa ne 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 ganna ganna me thana me ka sampurni ma active triangle lega oh me d ka mukda passive po oh passive wala me acting me na ke ala tiye na nee the thana podi ke ala Oh, eka hari, eka hari. It api the total stress ekan ne hoye ani. Metena me soil lega tiye na ani, metena me soil lega tiye na, right? Eka me soil lega ani. Me me kata soil lega ke na. Ito gor metena ena vertical stress ek kiya the sigma v ena wa gamma times d. Eka in dalay lateral pressure lega sigma h kiya la ganna gor me ke na active ekena wa k times gamma times d. Oh, even a metana, uh, a mulim and the guru kithino netra me, uh, rip color king, iragana, deep leg penetana. Oh, ethening, ethening loose me meta, or a metana, ethan point taking, loosening me, uh, up me meoditica, hm, metica me compressing me. Hm, are a me me, devilata, me putty part taker, anchor unknown, then the kilaman, now, we have an active force again. We have a diagram. We have a diagram. We have a passive 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 diagram. We have a In a may path thing up it, sorry, again this side we will get a passive development. Sorry, here there will be a passive force, so the gradient will be a bit higher, right? Here there will be a passive force in this portion, right? Uh, it's a uh, and in the other side also we will get a. Passive force, right? So here, right? So now in this portion here, right? 
there will be a passive resistance right here it will be a passive resistance are you okay with that so this value will be kp gamma times d and here we will get a passive value from the bigger triangle so this would be kp times right so i'll take this h this one as h1 so this is kp times uh, gamma plus sorry kp times gamma kb times gamma times h1 plus d right so here can you understand here there will be a passive stress right since the deflection is pushing this soil to this right the soil in the right side will be giving a passive resistance to stop that one right so the total stress at the bottom would be here the total stress the vertical stress would be right gamma times h1 plus d right so if you want to calculate find the passive stress here so the horizontal stress we have to multiply this one by the passive resistance constant right so h plus d times gamma right so now we the the, the concept is right what we have in our textbooks right they are overlapping these two diagrams they are just overlapping overlapping in this terms they are using the principle of superposition right at somewhere in this pivot point so here this pivot point we don't know the exact lo location of the pivot point but at that pivot point the resultant force is zero right so that is the theory there that is why it is pivoting so if we combine these two diagrams right when we combine these two diagrams so this is our sheet pile right and this is our soil in one side and the other side it's completely it's filled so the diagram would be so this is our pivot right it will be starting from here it will come to some end here right and it will go through this pivot point to a certain extent and again it will return right so this is that final diagram right they are overlapping these two right at some this pivot point the resultant would be zero right so when you overlap these two values right uh, that is the thing we have to consider there right uh, the issue here in this uh, cantilevered sheet pile so in sheet pile we have cantilevered one we have anchored one and there will there is another part for cohesion soil right so the cantilever right cantilever and the cohesion right uh, in both these type there are iterative calculation right so this is the cantilever one so this is the figure for cantilever right so and for both cohesion the cohesion figure uh, is something in this manner right for cohesion it's like this and again there will be a some straight line here and then again it will goes to that side for both these thing we have to use iterations right so we can't there are too many too many uh, unknowns at two or three locations so here most of the time we have to use iterative methods so if you remember in open channel also we did some iterations right but in the question here that's anchored pipe right so anchored sheet uh, sheet pipe so only this questions can be handled within a certain amount of time so if there are any chances uh, for sheet pile in this year paper i think it might be mostly from uh, anchored piles right uh, so i don't expect uh, so that's my personal opinion right 
so i don't uh, expect a question uh, other than anchored by it right the concept is that they they are drawing two envelopes separately for active and passive and both are overlapped so the final figure is obtained from that right uh, but it is very difficult to find a reference for this clay one right this is for cohesion soils where c is not equal to 0 right uh, here in this case drawing the diagram is much more easier right now we will move on to the question part right as i was just want to mention that how this envelopes are developed so the separate envelopes are drawn for active and the separate envelope is drawn for passive and both are overlapped right that is the concept which is which is happening there right so in our question right so the i said 20 kilo newton surcharge right We have a cube of 20 kilo newton per meter cubes, right? And there is an anchor at 1.5 meters. And there is water table below that. Okay, this is 1.5 meters, right? And below three meters, this is the dredging level, right? This is the dredge level. Right, this is three meters and we don't know the depth for how long this is penetrated right so the first question is calculate the lateral earth pressures right for before calculating the lateral earth pressures we need the coefficients we need ka and kp right so ka is one minus sine phi dash over one plus sine phi dash so kp is one over k right so this is one minus sine 28 or one plus sine 28. Okay. So the value is 0 0.361. So Kp would be one over 0 0.361. So that is 2.77. So the gamma values are given and uh, gamma bulk above the water table gamma is 18 below the water table it's submerged when so submerged is given it's 11 right so from the surcharge at point a right at this point a at this uh, so at point b right and i'm selecting some points right at uh, point c and at the bottom right so at A, due to the surcharge, we will get an horizontal stress. So that is Ka times 20, right? So 0 0.361 into 20, right? If this is a cohesive, if there is cohesion, we have to consider the other part also, which is minus 2C square root of Ka, but here we no need that part. Right, so at A, this is the value. So at B, sigma H is equal to Ka, that is 0 0.361 times the vertical stress. So vertical stress at A is so that is 20 plus right, uh, three times. 18 right so at c sigma h is equal to 0 0.361 into 20 plus 3 times 18 plus 3 times 11 at d sigma h is equal to 0 0.361 times 20 plus 3 times 18 plus
plus 3 times 11 plus d times d times 11 right ah no d is no no we didn't consider about the passive right so until c it's okay it's fine so d is the issue right so are you clear about these parts these are straightforward calculations right so we'll just i'll just draw the pressure distribution here so you can understand what is happening right so if you take the sheet pile so this is this would be our sheet pile right uh, and this is our dredging level so the dredge level and here is the anchor right this is our water level right so this surcharge one due to the surcharge we calculated a stress sigma that is 0 0.361 into 20 right that stress value will extend until here so this is my first portion right then due to this variation in the when we go in the depth there will be another force induced right after this this slope will decrease a bit this slope will decrease right because due to the effect of water the slope, slope will be somewhat smaller right after this due to this dredging line the passive will come into play so this passive resistance from this side this passive resistance will start to de reduce this value at a certain point it will become zero and it will move on to the other side so here this slope of this line would be kp minus k since always passive factor is higher so kp minus k so I'll take this depth as T naught, right? At this depth, we know the entire pressure is zero, right? So how to calculate that one? So here, right? We can calculate the total value here. So you would have calculated this from these figures. So this is figure two and this is figure three. Right, we can calculate from these portions at C. We know the value from here. We can take the value, and this would be sigma C, right? And we can find out this value using Kp minus K and T naught and the sigma, right? From this gradient line, we can find out that that is Kp, Kp minus K times sigma times T naught. That should be equal if it is going to be zero that should be equal to sigma c right we know sigma z we know gamma kp and ka are known so we can find t naught we can find a certain extent in the penetration so beyond that is the d minus t naught part this is the tricky part right we have to find that part right to find that one we are going to take moments right so taking moment, we have to see the entire structure, right? In the entire structure, this D is unknown. So we are going to find that one. Other than that D, there's another unknown, which is this anchor force. This anchor force is unknown. So we have to somewhat omit this anchor force and do the other work. So we can take moment from that point itself, right? So we are going to take the moment from this point, 
right so if you want to take the moment you need the force you need the lever arm right and you can find the bending moments right so for force you need to find for entire structure right every structures so we need the stress we know the stress here the stress is 0.361 times 20 right and we know this uh, entire height so that is 6 meter right considering the unit width right uh, if you multiply 6 and this final answer so i'll just calculate this so this is somewhat around 7.22 right so for for the force for the first portion is 7.22 times 6 right and the lever arm so where does this is a rectangle right in the rectangle the force would be acting at the center right since it is 6 meter the force would be acting at 3 meter right this anchor force is around 0.15 meter from the top and the center of gravity is three meters so the lever arm is this length right which is again 1.5 meter and you can find the bending moment by multiplying these two values similarly you have to do it for the second figure the third one the third rectangle one and for this one four and for this one five right so after calculating for every figures, so the active, the resultant moment should be zero. The total moment should be zero for equilibrium. So if you equate it to zero, you can find the value for D. So be careful while finding the lever arm. That is the point where most people get trouble. So be careful in that. So the below part are just for the calculation. So I'm not going to spend more time on that unless someone wants that. Any issues in the theory behind this? Excuse me. Yes. KP minus KA gamma T not explain them. Active force develop active force then passive force head in the patanga It would make the result and negando nepi among balanta depth take a man made level it would have dredging level like in Dakunu at the bed. Right hand side, they can up it a force like a canoa, K, A, gamma, T naught killer. Active force. Left hand side, they can up it a passive like a develop in a K, P, gamma, T naught killer. Harini? Gamma, T naught killer and a pade, they came a common. Harida? Mm -hmm. K, P, Anivarang, Vedi. Passive resistance, Vedi. It's what a gradient take a vadi in a resultant force mm -hmm. a kp minus k into gamma t not kila. May they get a resultant take a kp minus k a into gamma t not kila. It's what a line like a meha petra hereno. A k passive resistance a vadi. It's all line like a honey slope pegrean. Take a m a hairy lion. Oh, एक गैमा सीट है मैं मित्र ने गैमा सीट समान कर मैं मैं सीमा सीट समान करा नहीं ओ ऐ सीमा सीट समान करना क्या नहीं मैं 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 पैसे तीब्बा फोर्स टिको कम मैं मित्र ने जीरो वेला नहीं दिए एक्टिव एकाई पैसिव are a pivot point again? Then make a passive. May some poor term make a then resultant passive. Make a very resultant passive. Hmm. 
මේ රූපේ එන්නේ අර මං කලින් කිව්වා අර envelop විදියට තමයි එන්නේ හ්ම් ඒක මොනේ තෑන්ක් යු ඔකේ Any other issue? I think the solving part is not a big deal here. Um, I have given the idea so you can solve this. we discussed about flow net already yes the make make this a me pivot point ek kela ganne hariyata mara dredge line ekama da ne 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 dredge line ekama metana tiyenne meka dredge line eka man inna mikan ah kola pata penna meka dredge line eka ah hari da api pivot wenne dredge line ekata koyen hari pallaya thamai pivot wenne koheda kiyala api ta kiyanna ba eka hoya ganna thamai api active ekai passive ekai samana vela eka tanakin මේ ස්ට්‍රෙස් එක ජීරෝ වෙනවනේ ඔව් එතන තමයි පිවට් වෙන්නේ ස්ට්‍රෙස් එක ජීරෝ නම් එයා කොහෙටවත් ෂිෆ්ට් වෙන්නේ නැහැනේ ආ රයිට් එයා තමයි එතකොට ස්ට්‍රක්චර් කි පිවට් එක එයාව පිවට් වගේ තියාගෙන තමයි සම්පූර්ණ ස්ට්‍රක්චර් එකම කොහෙහර එක පැත්තට ඩිෆ්ලෙක්ට් වෙනවා ඩිෆ්ලෙක්ට් වෙන ෆේල් වෙන රයිට් ඔව් ඒක තියාගෙන තමයි අපි ඒක ඊසි ඒක අපිට ඉක්මනින් හොයා ගන්න පුළුවන් ඊට පස්සේ මේ ඩෙප්ත් එක හොයා ගන්න තමයි පොඩක් වැඩ වැඩි ගූර්ණය අරගෙන හොයන්න වෙනවා मोस्टली आवत पेपर एक टा आवत मैं का देन्दा पुलवांग मैं वाके गानं देन्दा पुलवांग अनित्य का आवना एक आइटरेशन सीओस करन्दे इनो अभी इम्मा वैल्यू एक आज दाला सुलु करला बाला ला एम इंदा बुढ़ा दुरटे एक एन नेटिवे एक मागे ओपिनियन ने का मंग गाना होए पुविदिया किंग मटा हम बिच्छे किंग कियां right so i am just uh, going through the 2016 17 paper and we already discussed about uh, some we did some discussion about uh, the dam questions and some footings and uh, so any other sections so i the pile from pile pile how solve b and c how to solve b and c right b and c so depth determine the depth of uh, penetration right so the depth of penetration just now i said you have to complete this chart right you have to complete this chart uh, for each and every portions right uh, give me a second i'll draw a clear figure right so if you take your sheet this is your sheet pile right the sheet pile right so the our water table is around 3 meters below and so here is our water table right so this is our dredging line right so here our stress distribution would be this would be the first rectangle then there would be a another triangle like this and after this this would be something like this this manner right so i'm just numbering these values so this is one this is two right and i'm just dividing this portion here this is three this small triangle is four this one is five and this one is six right so here we have the anchoring point so i am mark, marking the point where is where there is anchor i am marking the point is s a right so i am going to take moments so you have to take moments right we are considering a there is a reason 
for we are considering about a because uh, we don't know the force on the anchor so if you want to omit that one we have to consider that point so after considering that point right from that point you have to calculate the forces for each figures for 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 for all the figures you have to calculate the force and and the lever arms from me right and the bending moment diagrams and the bending moments right and for equilibrium this bending moment should be zero right for the equilibrium condition and after using that condition you can find this d minus t not we already know this t not if you know d minus t not also you can find that penetration depth d right so to find the force on the anchor to find the force on the anchor anchors right you can find the total passive force we know the total passive force right and you can find we can find the total active force right we have found that already from here from this table we have to consider the total active forces and the total passive forces so what is the one and only passive resultant force we are having that is this one right other thing are active right so there will be a difference in these forces right so active would be larger right and this one this would be smaller right so the difference should be acting here right so since the active pressure is higher we are providing this anchorage so the difference should be given by this part right so and just another thing the anchor, anchor rod if anchor rods are spaced at 2 meter centers right so the anchor rods are placed for each by 2 meters right so we are calculating every parameters here these four parameters will be in kilonewtons per meter for 1 meter right those are spaced at 2 meters right so we have to multiply the final answer by 2 and answer the question right is it okay 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 so any other issues in this uh, part it seems like nothing right okay so the next question is uh, in the 2016 17 paper the next question is about direct shear test right so our laboratory paper i have no idea about the laboratory paper we'll just see what is the question right uh, direct shear test and triaxial test are two different methods of determination of shear strength of soil in laboratory Uh, this state to advantages of direct shear test compared to tires directly uh, theory parts i'll move on to the question uh, soil sample is tested to failure in a consolidated drained triaxial test uh, using a cell pressure of 200 kilopascal the effective stress parameters are so this is from triaxial test right so i am not going to do that one so that is for the final right since this is this discussion is only based on design part i am not going to uh, do that one so we'll see that when we are discussing for the final 
so anyone who want to do this question again that means the flow net right so i don't think so because we already did a similar question right uh, and the footing also we did a similar question in the previous paper same as that this footing question right question 5 is a raft foundation and it is from consolidation part right so i don't think uh, we'll be getting consolidation in design right uh, so it's so since it is design right it should somewhat related to in some sort of design part right so if you want uh, uh, should i do this design sorry this consolidation question 5 consolidation one since on anyone else ोडे <laughs> नहीं मटर ना ही तो ना अब कोमर रिटेनिंग वॉल टाइप्स ऐंड अपुल वांग सीट पाइल्स ऐंड अपुल वांग सर आ रहे मैं टेक डी और टेक्निकल डिजाइन पार्ट टेक आप वगैरह ने पेपर एक किया ला दाल चीप बार मैं का कुना था अनाउंसमेंट टेक ओ मटर ना ही तो ना मैं 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 गाना चीज ना मारू गाना अपने मैं का वन ह उट्स in the sessions uh, which we have discussed up to now i mean uh, in the flow net uh, or in uh, the sheet piles or the foundation things hima me yes. me flow net ka porta skim karanna puluwan da meka da me me 2016 17 paper ekida oh meke thun gene eka uh hari balamuko ena uh so don't worry i thought of uh, uh doing another session tomorrow also with uh, the other things i mean the some asking about the slope uh, the swedish circle and the pile and some questions from direxia test and uh, those things i thought of doing uh, tomorrow because now it's already around 2 and a half hours i planned for 3 hours so i thought of uh, doing that so we will discuss this and uh, end it for today and we'll do that those things tomorrow tomorrow right. what time sir uh, i thought of uh, doing the same time right 8 to 11 because some um, some of my friends and uh, some of you also might be working and some are working until late night some late evening so that's why uh, i thought of doing uh, from 8 o'clock that's that's better okay. okay right so we'll see this one uh, an approximate flow net diagram is as shown in figure q3 for a flow through a clay silt base of 37 meter wide uh, via coefficient of permeability is given tabulate the total pressure and the elevation heads at a b c and d uh, take the top uh, of the impermeable layer ef as data right so let's see so here so ef is the datum right 
EF is the datum. So if EF is datum, so we are starting here. So here the total head is zero. So what about the total head of A? So the total head of A is 34 meters, right? Yes. Yes, for A, total head is 34 meters. For B, the total head is again 34 meters, right? Again, 34. For point D, uh, we can't say what is the total head there. Ah, oh, yeah, we can, right? Uh, it is uh, 24 uh, plus 1.5. 24 plus 1.5. So at point D, so it is 25.5, right? So the head difference, the total head difference is uh, 34 minus 34 minus 25.5. So what, what number of uh, drops? Uh, how many drops are there? Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? Okay. So we have to divide by 14. So we'll get the drop per uh, one drops, right? We can find the total head per drop. So here, one, two, three, for after deducting four times of that, we can find the total head that point C. So that is 34 minus four times that drop, right? So after finding the, uh, so now the total head is done, right? So the elevation head is easy for, so for point A, so the elevation is 34, for point B elevation is 24. So point C elevation is, uh, 21, right? 24 minus 3, right? And for point D, we can find the elevation as again 21, sorry, 24, right? So if we know the total head and we know the elevation head, right? So we can deduct and find the pressure head, right? Are you okay with that? Right. And the flow rate is not an issue. So Q equal K times H into NF by ND, right? So K is given, H is 10, the height of the water, right? In a flow line, there are four flow lines. Three is shown in properly and the fourth one is along the base, right? Fourth one would be very close to the base, right? And the number of drop is 14, we calculated, and from that we can find this one, right? Uh, calculate, uh, right? Calculate the approximate uplift force on the base of the dam per meter length of the dam, right? So we are considering per meter. So, so I am taking these points, right? I will just change the color, right? So we will take these points, this one, right? These points, one, two, this C, this D, E, F, G, and this one. Along these points, right? So we have to calculate the pressure heads over there, right? Uh, so for individual points, you have to find the total head again. For, for C, we know the total head. But for other points, we don't know the total heads. So we have to find the total heads separately. Elevation is same. Elevation is 21 meter. So this is the elevation head, right? So we have to subtract that and you have to find the pressure head. So after that, so as usual, so you have to use the Simpson rule and close the problem. So the same as that, right? So nothing special. Any any issues in this one? The same problem. Excuse me. No. Mali me metana me basic ito ta anti ma me D wala ta tiyena me equation line niya ganon di. Metana make that, make point together. Oh, oh, make other, make the Udama D key and a point together. Ah, Nana, may meet a basic antima connect in a maker, within Palliata, with a pointer, may meet a Palliatine pointed gun on the money. 
प्रशर स्क्स <laughs> पेपर दुला ओके मेरे अपलिफ मंट कर बाला पर आना लाइन से कहते कहते तूने हाथ लाइन दी है नहीं ओ ओ ओ सॉरी शायर कैंसल होना नहीं पड़ता किंगा हाँ हरी नहीं हरी और अगेन मेक मेक अ आई मेक पॉइंट का ही देखना है आई तूना है हाथ रहा ओ वो यहाँ हाथ रखता मैं ऐसी दिखेला मार हैं ओ ऐसी ऐसी प्रश्न है ना अभी गन पोटेंशियल � मेदिंग अन्ना मांगे ना देंगे दी दीप रूपे आ दीप रूपे ना हाथ रख करने पड़ो ओ दे दीप रूपे लेफ्ट एज्जे के यार देंग अरे पाइले का गहलती है ना तैना टोटल हेड को होया ना कि वो इतने दी कोहमा देख होया ना इतने होया क्या ना मित्र ने मित्र ने कट ऑफ वॉल लगे थी याने तैने इन्हें वाकिया ने मैं वाना टोटल हेड डेकर टोटल हेड डेकर टा है ना मेथना अभी टा प्रश्न आपके नाने ओ इतना इतना बोल ये सामान्य कट ऑफ वाले का गावा टा है ना काम मैं आगे मैं अप्लिफ्टमेंट टा कटा इफेक्ट है ना वाने ओ ओ ओ मैं कह कोई हरी मैं आगे का फंग है दुआ और अगेन अकाल पना अन्न बुलाना तो ना पालवे नहीं ड्रॉप पे का अंदर भेज दे सर पालवे नहीं ड्रॉप पे का में तो ना नहीं थी इन्हें ओ एक गाना बैग वाले दायरे एक एक मंटे कटा वाला पैम बनाएगी ना एक है वैन ना मैं आई इलाके के में तो ना सिट्टी नहीं इलाके के में तो ना इटे पसे ने में तो ना अभी एकाई देकाई तूनाई अतराई पहाक ड्रॉप पे लाने में पॉइंट के टाइम इन्हें अभी टोटल हेड डे मैं ड्रॉप पे कर आदिन आदिन ने भी लाया क्या नहीं आदिन ने पुलों ने ये देखा एक हथराई पहाड़ में दे हथराई 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 पहाड़ टाइम में दिंग वाला लाइन का कांडी ऐंदा कंडा पुलवांग इनका प्रश्न है ना ऐंदा की आने हैमत है ना मांडी इन्होंने 
එක තැනකින් හිතලා හරියන්නේ නැහැ ඇඳලා ඇයි දැන් මෙතන ඔයා ඇන්දා කියන්නේ ඔයා මෙතනින් ඇන්දා කියමුකෝ ඒකට මේ මේක රෙක්ටැංගල් හරිද ආ ආ මේක රෙක්ටැංගල් අනිත් ස්ක්වයර් අනිත් ඒවා ඔක්කොම ස්ක්වයර් ටයිප් ස්ක්වයර් ටයිප් වෙනවා ආ එතකොට ඩ්‍රොප් එක වෙනස් නේ එහෙනම් ඔය ආයෙ මේ දෙකට කැල්කියුලේට් කරලා මෙතන තියෙන ඩ්‍රොප් එක හොයන්න ඕනේ එහෙම කියන්නේ නැහැ දැන් මේ ලයින් එකටයි මේ ලයින් එකටයි ඩ්‍රොප් එක h නම් දැන් මේ මැද තියෙන ලයින් එකට මැද හරි මැද්දෙන් ඇඳ නම් මැදින් තියෙන ලයින් එකට h 2 කියලා ඩ්‍රොප් එකක් එනවනේ හ්ම් එතකොට ටෝටල් හෙඩ් එක මෙතන h 2 වලින් ඩ්‍රොප් වෙනවා ආ එහෙනම් මේ මං කියන්නේ මේ ලයින් එකට පොඩ්ඩක් ඉන්න මම වෙන කලර් එකක් ගන්න मेकट मेकट तीन टोटल हेड मे लाइन तीन टोटल हेड दहाय मे लाइन तीन टोटल हेड अटाईना संपूर्ण ड्रॉप देखा हरी मेदे लाइन का लाइन ड्रॉप एक्का मेतन दहाय मेतन अटाईना मेद लाइन नम मे वे साल कला होया गो मेक ඔය ගානෙදි මේ අපි අප්ලිෆ්මන්ට් එක හොයනකොට අර පස් වෙනි ලයින් එකේ ඉඳලා ඉතුරු ටික විතරක් සැලකුවට ගැටලුවක් නැද්ද ඔය ගානට නෑ 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 ගැටලුවක් නෑ ගැටලුවක් නෑ හරි හරි anything else दागेट कर मैं कंप्लीकेट करना विधियाँ तो देनने हैं कोमा एक आया पीछे देंगे बालान दो या आया ते मेरे पेपर के नोट सर ला पीछे एक लेसी करना है दे आ मेकिंग इट इजी फॉर अस एप्रोक्सिमेट अपलिफ्ट क्या वचन एक आ किये ना सो दैट इस नॉट एप्रोक्सिमेट सॉरी दैट इस नॉट द एक्यूरेट अपलिफ्ट right since we are using some like simpson rule trapezoidal rule and we are only taking few points so this is a 50 meter dam so very big dam right so 50 meter means it's very wide so we are taking only three or four points oh. so the calculation result will be however less accurate that's why they are mentioning the term approximate uh, uplift so they are making it easier for us oh. Oh. हतर विधिया අපි දන්නවනේ දැන් අපිට මේක right there, there are some properties right for flow lines and stream uh, potential drop lines eq potential lines there are some properties so eq potential line always starts perpendicularly it always starts with 90 degree right so if we draw a line like this one that is not 90 degree there there's no 90 degree so we can't draw like this shape uh-huh. And there are some conditions right to draw uh, draw flow nets so we have to um, follow that one also and draw the mm-hmm. figure so that is the issue here so use the points which they have already given so for example here in this case right 
use these lines which they have given to us i mean uh, this line this one this one this one right mm. so other other than that there is there are not any other thing even if you want to include you can in, you, you may include this one since it's an approximation right uh other things we can't include they are not connected to the dam so we can include these things anything else So any any questions from the day school notes or anything so there were some questions which were very much similar to this so tomorrow can you do some pile questions Oh, ah, yeah. We'll uh, discuss about piles, and uh, we'll uh, do one or two questions from Swedish circle, uh, and uh, some questions, one or two questions from Direksha. Right. There are there are about two or three sessions right for tomorrow also. Thank you. Hey, Hima. Oh. मतकिया उड़ीन <laughs> अनिवार्यूकती මේ අද නෙමෙයි හිම හෙට බලලා කියනවා හැදුවා කිව්වනේ එක මේ අතර කෝන එකේ අර මැතිටාව වහම වෙන කේස් එක කෝන එකේ මැතිටාව ඒක පුළුවන් නම් අහු වුණොත් කියන්න ඕ ආ අර මේ අර මේ 2016 paper එකෙන් නේ ඕ මුල්ල අර තුන්වෙනි ගාන මොඩලට සෙට් වුණාම වෙන්නේ ඒක දැන් ඕනේ නේ ඔයා හිමිට බලලා හිත කරන්න ඕන කොහොමද එතකොට පොඩ්ඩක් ඒක නිකන් කියලා මාක් කරනම් හරි ඇති මේ ටයිප් එකනේ ඔය කියන්නේ මට ඒක කොහෙද මේකනේ ඔව් ඔව් ඔකේ මෙතන අන්න හරි මුල්ල ඕකේ නේ මේ 2017 නේ 2017 මේක මේකේ අන්නව මේකෙන් ඔය කියන්නේ මේ පොයින්ට් එකනේ 
मेतन पीठ के लिए मैं बोलवा मेतन मीटर्स So here it is soil, right? So there is an issue that this, this is a small portion is from the soil. So there is an issue. Yeah, we can't find the pressure here directly. Yes. so we will have, we will have to introduce a potential drop there something like this so this is perpendicular to this point and perpendicular to here in that manner we have to introduce one and we have to divide this by 2 and go on i think yes that is the idea so here we have to do something like that oh ne etakota mulatama vitarayana palavinikata vitarayana oka yes again etakota uh sheet pile diagram in textbook different to that page number what is, what do you mean by that one so that is uh, that diagram is for the sheet pile uh with uh, cantilever sheet pile right So this one is this one is that that is a cantilever one, right? So this one is for cohesionless soils, right? This one is for cohesionless soils. Sorry, cohesion cohesive soils, not cohesionless. It's for cohesive soils, right? And the question which we are handling is not here, not in this one, right? so the question we are handling you can find that in the book right so we are get we have drawn the same diagram i think there's not nothing thing wrong there i 
right last year acquire last year acquire means uh, this paper 2016 17 paper sorry 17 18 paper this one is this a, is this one question number 4 no in this one right uh, i will be here until 11 if you have any doubts if you want to ask it uh, you can ask and others may leave i'll uh, email a feedback form and uh, Uh, please feel that uh, and uh, i'll upload this also so i upload this video also so you can check it out in youtube so this one answers you need the answers right for the permeability and uh, the drawdown right permeability uh, so the permeability value i got was uh, 4.5 cm per second right sorry not 4.5 not 4.5 cm per second sorry Zero point four point four five centimeters per second, and the drawdown I got was zero point four meter. That was the values which I got. Any other doubts for anyone else? seems like nothing then shall i end, end it okay right, thank you and good night sir okay good night thank you very much thank you oh, okay bari himala okay 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 thank you thank you okay welcome welcome हाँ थैंक यू मचान ओके ओके मैम हरे थैंक यू वेरी मच ओके वेलकम